Welcome to Badminton Unlimited, your weekly access to badminton and beyond. This week, we sit down with rising men's singles player Iskandar Zulkarnan Zainuddin as he tells us about the challenges he's faced in making it big on the senior circuit. And we find out more about the IOC Athletes Career Programme held by the BWF in Spain. Li Chong Wei is the undisputed number one men's singles shuttler in Malaysia. In the past decade, his accolades have brought immense pride and glory for his country. The world number one player is a tough act to follow, and many have tried and failed to measure up to the legend. But there's a player in the ranks slowly gaining ground in the discipline. And there are lofty ambitions for Iskandar Zulkarnain Zainuddin to fly the Malaysian flag high in the men's solo event. Yeah, I got stress a bit. Uh, I do feel the stress whenever people say that I'll be Lee Chong Wei's successor. I actually have a lot to improve on and learn. So as the second singles player now, I'm only working towards the top 10 as a professional badminton player and to get better results for myself. Ranked 23rd in the world, Iskandar is currently Malaysia's second best men's singles shuttler. Though quite far from Lee Chong Wei's number one spot, the 26-year-old nevertheless represents the country's future hopes in men's singles. As the second singles in Malaysia, I have more responsibilities, as I need to work harder and be more disciplined. What I need to improve is my physique. I'm doing all right in the technical area and all other areas, except my physique, because I'm on the skinny side. So I need to train harder. At 17, Iskandar was looked upon as one of the nation's bright prospects after finishing runner-up in 2009 at the BWF World Junior Championships and the Badminton Asia Junior Championships. But he struggled after transitioning to the senior level and without any significant result for four years, Iskandar thought about hanging up the racket. Early last year, I almost wanted to give up because many players from my batch left the Malaysia squad because of poor results. So I thought, maybe it was time for me too. But before that decision was made, I competed in the Austrian Open. I reached the final, the first final of my senior career. At that time, Morten Frost was not with BAM yet. When he joined a month later, he spoke to me and told me that I could go far. He gave me the confidence and told me that I can make it to the top 20 and top 15 in the world. He arranged for me to go to tournaments in Europe to gain ranking points. Over there, I won two titles, the International Series and the International Challenge. That really boosted my confidence. Under the guidance of newly installed technical director of BAM, Morten Frost, Iskandar made the long-awaited breakthrough on the international scene, winning his maiden senior title at the 2015 OUE Singapore International Series before making top-of-the-podium finishes in Poland and Switzerland. Prior to this, I rarely had the chance to compete in Europe. There were other seniors like Chong Wei Feng, Liu Deren, Tan Chun Singh and Arif Latif. They had more opportunities because I was right below and I didn't produce any results. When I won my title, Morten Frost encouraged me again. You see, you can do it. I felt very happy. I then reached the final of the Malaysia Masters Grand Prix Gold in Penang. My confidence further increased. Making the final of the Malaysian Masters a Grand Prix Gold level tournament earlier this year was another notch for Iskandar. In an all-Malaysian final in which he faced idol Lee, he impressed the country's top shuttler with his fighting spirit and maturity. I was happy to be able to face him. He gave me a lot of motivation before the match. He said, just do your best, don't be afraid. When I played the first game, I went all out. I wanted to win the first game, but I couldn't. 
come the second game, Dato Lee was in total control. After the match, he told me, good job, keep on training, don't look back, just look forward in your career. Just keep forward to your career. The Malaysia number no. two has been making steady progress on the international circuit. He impressed at the 2016 Thomas Cup, in which Malaysia were bronze medalists, playing fearlessly against higher ranked shuttlers. More recently, Iskander powered his way to the last four of the Thai Hot China Open, the furthest he's reached in a World Super Series tournament. And the semi final finish saw the Malaysian jump a whopping 10 places up the world rankings. It is tough in the men's singles discipline. It's very competitive and there's a lot of rivals from so many countries. In my junior years, the best was Tian Hoi. He's now in the top 10. When I think of such things, I feel down. But I'll keep fighting to move forward. I think badminton is not about age. If you believe you can do it, Anything is possible. I just have to look at my idol, Lee Chong Wei. He's not young anymore, but he still keeps fighting. There's still time for the youngster to develop his game and learn from the master. Maybe when Lee finally calls time on his career, Iskander will be primed and ready to carry the torch for his country. How well do you know our world champions? In this week's trivia, we want you to name the last Chinese women singles BWF world champion. We'll give you the answer after the break. When we return, we're in Spain to find out more about the IOC Athletes Career Program. With digital innovations, shuttle time is now more fun, engaging and accessible than ever. So get connected to BWF's Badminton Schools program. Find out more about BWF's grassroots program on these platforms. Download the app, visit the website and get active on Facebook. Your gateway to shuttle time has never been so easy. Before the break, we asked you to name the last Chinese women singles BWF world champion. The answer is Wang Yihan. In 2011, Wang defeated Chinese Taipei's Cheng Xiaoqie to clinch her only world championship title. Her victory marked China's 10-year dominance in the women's singles discipline. However, the victory in London also remains the last time the country stood on top of the podium in the women's solo event. A silver medalist at the 2012 London Olympics, Wang hoped to go further in Rio, seeded second in the competition, but she only reached the quarterfinals. Following her substandard performance in Brazil, the Shanghai native decided to bring down the curtains on her decade-long international career. She was, however, not the only one to have retired from international badminton post-Olympics. Wang Shixian, as well as double specialist Zhao Yunlei and most recently Ma Qin, also called time on their careers. The Yonex Sunrise Hong Kong Open was the last event of the MetLife BWF World Super Series circuit, and the tournament, held at the Hong Kong Coliseum, was also the final chance for players to make the cut for the Dubai World Super Series finals. Raising the curtains on finals day was women's singles, and the contest saw a matchup between India's PV Sindhu and Chinese Taipei's Tai Tsuing. Fresh from her Thai Hot China Open win, Sindhu was poised to give another winning performance, but her opponent had other ideas. After the first game ended in the Chinese Taipei players' favor, Sindhu kept plugging away in the second in hope of taking the match to a decider. But with Tai in irresistible form, any prospect of that fizzled out as the match wore on. After 41 minutes, Tai claimed her second World Super Series crown of the year. The final score, 
21-17. It was an all-Indonesian affair in the mixed doubles final when Olympic champions Tontawi Ahmad and Liliana Natsir faced compatriots Praveen Jordan and Debbie Susanto. World number five pair Jordan and Susanto have yet to beat Ahmad and Natsir in all competitions, and this encounter gave them another shot at changing that record. They did well to keep close in the first game, but their more accomplished opponents put their experience to good use, edging them out 21-19. It was the same narrative in the second, Ahmad and Natsir showing why they're the world's best mixed doubles partnership despite Jordan and Susanto's best efforts. Ahmad and Natsir wrapped up the match in straight games, 21-19, 21-17, the final score. Men's singles was next and India put out another contender in the solo discipline. The unseeded Samir Virma was hoping to thwart the challenge of local favorite Ung Ka Long. Having defeated Thai Hot China Open winner Jana Jorgensen the day before, Verma's confidence was at a high, but Ung was up for the challenge. Bolstered by the home crowd, Ung grabbed the opener with relative ease, but he fell behind in the second after a rejuvenated Verma took control of the game. Ung refocused for the final game and the world number 14 was soon in the driving seat. With Verma quickly losing steam, Ung powered home to clinch his maiden World Super Series crown and Hong Kong's first ever men's singles title in the 34 years of the Unix Sunrise Hong Kong Open. Final score, 21-14, 10-21, 21-11. Next up to entertain the crowds at the Hong Kong Coliseum was the women's doubles final, and Denmark's Camilla Ritter Yule and Christina Pedersen were up against the Chinese pairing of Huang Dongping and Li Inhui. Huang and Li narrowly missed out on winning in China and were hoping to make amends here. However, the Chinese women were made to fight for every point as their Danish counterparts kept up the pressure. Rita Yule and Pedersen snatched the opener and continued to hold the fort in the following game. Huang and Li's big attacks yielded little success as the Danes anticipated their moves correctly. Rita Yule and Pedersen were very much in control and cruised to victory 21-19, 21-10 to claim their second Super Series crown of the year. Men's doubles veteran duo Karsten Mogensen and Matthias Bo stepped out next to take on Japan's Takeshi Kimura and Keigo Sonoda. Although the Japanese doubles act have impressed with their performances this year, titles have eluded them. Kimura and Sonoda were keen not to go home empty-handed again, and that determination showed when they pipped Mogensen and Bo to grab the first game. The Japanese pair took charge early in the second and had a huge lead before Bo and Morganson came fighting back to level the scores at 17 all. Scores were tied until 1919. The East Asians ultimately showed better composure and surged ahead to grab the next two points and more importantly, their maiden title. A pulsating match that finished 21-19, 21-19. Athletes invest everything in becoming the best. They spend decades honing their skills to reach the top, but someday they will have to retire. What happens when their time on the field of play ends? In 2005, the International Olympic Committee Athletes Commission launched a development program responding to this fundamental need for the athlete. And the IOC Athlete Career Program was introduced to provide training for athletes as they prepare for life after sport. Essentially, it's about helping athletes find the best way to transition from their sporting careers into life after sport. Because we all know sports is a fantastic career and it's one of those incredible opportunities that you get to travel the world, compete against people from different nations, but it only lasts for a very short period of time. Roughly, people are done between 25 and 30, and you then have up to 40 to 50 years left of your life to be working. It's a big period of time, and this course is about trying to help athletes transfer the skills they've learned in their sporting career into their career after sport. The IOC have involved international federations in running the courses for their athletes, and the BWF recently held a pilot implementation of the Athlete Career Programme at the World Junior Championships in Bilbao. 
I think it's really important. It's really important for us to be working with the IOC on this project. Um, IOC have produced a really interesting resource for the players. Uh, it's very interactive. I think the players will have a lot of fun this morning. But I think we have a really good access to our players and we can maybe get to more players than the IOC can through their NOCs. So I think it's a really good initiative from the IOC. As the sport's governing body, the BWF is always aiming to improve the players' conditions and embracing the athlete career programme as part of their badminton pathway is another addition to their commitment in developing players globally. BWF provides a lot of support for athletes globally to improve themselves as players, to put them on a pathway that hopefully eventually leads them to high performance, to world championships, maybe eventually Olympics for some of them. But at the same time, we feel it's important to support those athletes to make sure that they're organised in their, in their life as a whole, that they've got options for when they finish playing in terms of career, and they have all the information available to them that we can provide. Athletes are goal-oriented, determined, and have an unrivaled desire to succeed. And these qualities, which they have shown in their sporting careers, are likely to show up in their work lives also. The career programme teaches athletes how to transfer their unique skills and assets acquired during their sporting career into the labour market. It also helps them develop lifelong excellence through education, employment and life skills. Former shuttlers, Scotland's Emma Mason and Guatemala's Pedro Young who are now course leaders for the programme, have themselves benefited from the development programme. It's very important that they prepare to, to their lives after sports, not only with education, but with all their means to, to enhance their skills, to be better equipped, to, to compete in the labour market, to get into job positions with people that are not sportsmen. My experience of speaking to other athletes, and especially when I was one, is that players are very interested in learning about how they can use the skills they've learned in their future careers. I think there's not been enough focus on that previously, but courses like this are aiming to address that. For young shuttlers, having a clear life pathway helps them when looking to embark on a badminton career. If you can see that there is a pathway there and that the kids uh, learn the right uh, steps to prepare themselves for, for the careers. I think there will be more kids joining uh, badminton because they can see sport maybe also as a tool to enhance their, their, their skills, to, to be better uh, equipped to be in the labour market in the future. Retirement from sport is inevitable. The IOC Athlete Career Programme provides a stepping stone to a career after elite competition. And with proper preparation, shuttlers can enhance their lives beyond sports. <laughs> After the break, we have a heart-to-heart -heart with Triple Crown European Para Badminton Champion, Luca Mazur. Visit our YouTube channel, badmintonworld.tv. There are tournament highlights, plays of the day, as well as past matches to savour. Every episode of Badminton Unlimited is also available for your viewing pleasure. All the best badminton clips are just a click away. Elite badminton boasts some of the world's prodigious talents. The likes of Chinese superstar Chen Long, and Spanish sensation Carolina Marin are two of many who are constantly taking the sport to new heights. While their on-court heroics appear to dominate sporting headlines, the para badminton fraternity is also capable of sprinkling stardust of its own. Proud to be among those leading their charge is France's Luca Mazor. The reigning Triple Crown European champion isn't phased by the attention his able-bodied counterparts are getting because he knows he's in the company of remarkable people. But in Power Badminton, the atmosphere is very great and I hope uh, that will continue because uh, all the people are supporting the other and uh, the level is uh, more and more better year after year. So I think it's better to be in the Power Badminton atmosphere because uh, 
the people are, are more units. We caught up with the 19-year-old at the recent European Para Badminton Championships held in the Netherlands. Not only did the French player successfully retain his men's singles SL4 crown, he also went home with the men's and mixed doubles titles. An impressive feat for a teenager, but Luca was already fighting a man's battle at an early age. He suffered a stroke at the age of three after developing complications when he contracted chickenpox and it left him with a growth deformity in his right ankle. But growing up, Luca was just like any other active boy. When I was a kid, in my head, uh, I have a problem. And uh, so uh, the result was in my legs and uh, my uncle has a small problem when I was uh, walking. But when I'm running, it's okay, I can move really fast. So I have a, a, a very small problem to my uh, right legs. When I was kids, I start the sport by the football. I really enjoy the football, especially the French football. I play six years of football, and after my parents uh, keep me uh, to uh, badminton for see a new sport, an individual sport, and I really enjoy it and I continue badminton. The shuttle game turned out to be his true calling, and Luca hasn't looked back since. I really enjoy. So I continue in a club at 12, and after uh, I continue to training hard and uh, practice. And I start for Bennington at uh, 14 years old, at the World Championship in uh, Germany, in Dortmund. I prefer to be alone for, my, uh, for myself on the court. I prefer to uh, get a result with only my work. I think it's better for me. The 2014 European Para Badminton Championships was to be a groundbreaking year for the young shuttler. Competing in men's singles SL4, Luca became his country's first winner of that event. The maiden triumph did wonders for his belief. Last year, Luca went on to sweep international titles in Ireland and China. Luca, however, couldn't carry his winning form into the 2015 World Para Badminton Championships. I'm very proud to, uh, to get a, a silver medal, but uh, I was a little disappointed because at the last game, uh, at the changing, I was, uh, I was winning 12-6 uh, and I lost 21-15. I was so tired uh, from the competition because I, I'm uh, playing the three games, single, double and mixed, so uh, it was very hard for me to be uh, but with the sport making its Paralympics bow in 2020, Luca can look forward to more opportunities to refine his game. Back home, there's been a genuine embracing of para badminton, helping to take the sport to the next level. I was uh, very happy to uh, know that uh, para badminton will be uh, at the Paralympic Games because, because it's a dream for all the players to be at 2020 Paralympic Games at Tokyo. A lot of players are coming more on the French Para Badminton competition. The French Badminton Federation are giving more and more money and uh, improve the, the sports. So it's very important for the French Federation to have more and more players. For now, Para Badminton's whiz kid is under no illusion. He knows that more hard work lies ahead of him as he seeks more sporting glory. For me, uh, to be a champion, uh, start when you train very hard and when you prepare a very important competition, it's, it's uh, very important to prepare and continue to work hard for win. I, I think you win after a long preparation. You cannot win if you are not prepared. So be a champion is to be ready uh, at the time. In Luca Mazor, para badminton has unearthed another gem. And now with Tokyo 2020, a realized dream. France can be sure they'll have their European champion leading the way. Before we go, let's see what the international circuit looks like as we check the Badminton Unlimited calendar. Take note of the season-ending spectacle in December as the world's best will be vying for top honours at the Dubai World Super Series Finals in the Emirati.
Next week on Badminton Unlimited, we catch up with Marcus Vinaldi Gideon and Kevin Sanjaya Sukumoljo, the heirs apparent to Indonesia's successful men's doubles legacy. See you next week.